Aristotle writes, uh, this alone is denied even to God to make what has been not to have been. So first of all, why study history? It comes from a Greek word means inquiry, looking into things. Uh, the first book of history was written by Herodotus. It's called The Histories. It's a story of the past, and of course not everything in the past, significant things in the past, things that we can learn from, things that stand for something. It's just a piece really of this wish that we have to understand. In his metaphysics, Aristotle says in the first line, uh, the human soul stretches itself out to know. We like to know. And one of the things we like to know is we like to know about ourselves because Unlike other creatures, we're not ruled simply by instinct. We have to choose our way. Which way should we go? And then the second thing is we look at others. And we are unusually well equipped to do this because we can talk. We can explain things to each other. We can tell each other about our inmost thoughts. So history just expands the scope. And the, st the past is the only thing we can study intensely. The present is fleeting past is fixed, at least according to the old school of thought. These days, uh, it's a deconstructionist age, and uh, what we think is we're our own special time, a development or a progress on previous times. And that sets up uh, a way to reinterpret those old times so that they fit our categories. And we tend to look down on them a bit, too. And uh, that seems to me exactly wrong. Aristotle writes, uh, this alone is denied even to God to make what has been not to have been. Uh, so history, it gives us a fixity that is made up of things that at the time were constantly shifting and hard to estimate. When we're picking what we're going to do from among various options, we always have two things in mind. One is, what would be the right thing to do? And the other is, what is possible to do? And you know, you can't always do the purely right thing. Well, if you go back and study the people in the past, they're in the same situation. And yet, in their case, the whole story is known. It's not changing anymore. And you can go back and you can put yourself in the shoes, you know, of Winston Churchill or of Abraham Lincoln. Those, by the way, are two things that are sublime to do, beautiful to do, important to do. And you can be with them where Lincoln faces the question, should I let the South go? Look at the body count. Lincoln grappled with that question. You can grapple with him. Churchill, should we fight to the death against Hitler? He's offering a deal. So. The point is, there's a lot to know. And what, what can you know? Can you know it's now right or wrong to do what we're going to do in some country where we've had wars? No, you can just know that a serious man had caution about that. And what were the factors that he evaluated to make up his mind? You could look at the same factors. They may be different today. But all of that depends on treating history as if it is made by people who, although very different from us in many ways, are yet still people. The, the animals that can talk to each other, learn from each other, uh, recognize good and evil, which are all, by the way, we have a course on Aristotle where we explain this, those are all related. Our ability to see good and evil and our ability to talk boil down to the same thing. And so a creature like that, which lives in a perishable body and has needs, how does it steer itself by the ultimate truth when in its needs, it's just like any animal? Well, that's the human test. And the people in the past had to go through that test. Good history then will be an accurate and so far as it's humanly possible to make it picture of what happened in the past with a sympathy for the people so that one can learn from them. They made mistakes. Yeah, and don't we? Do we live in a perfect world today? If we don't, then they were grappling with the same thing we are. 
Thank you for watching. We hope you're enjoying our highlight series and invite you to explore all of Hillsdale College's online courses. They are free and for everyone who loves to learn.